So welcome everybody. I'm so glad that you are here and um, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you this morning. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bible you may turn with me to Revelation 8. Now um, I've done uh, the book of Revelation now in the long time period. You can go and see um, but I'm not going to speak on the Revelation um, but it's a, a word this morning and I'm going to speak to you um, about the golden censer of prayer or praise. How um, precious and important it is for us to know and understand this. A golden censer of prayer or praise. A censer. Now um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn Revelation 8 verse 1. And here you will see on my board that I have a crown here and this is a cup. Alright? A cup, but another word for this cup is a bowl or a censer. Alright? So if you know a golden censer or a golden cup of prayer. Alright? So this is a censer or a cup or a bowl. So it says in Revelation 8 verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal. Alright. There was silence in heaven. So it's all about Jesus Christ as the lamb. That was slain. Jesus is a lamb. In the book of Revelation. Alright. He took a scroll. And there are seven seals. And this is the seventh seal he broke open. Alright. There is a silence in heaven for about half an hour. Now this is uh, only in the Greek word for half an hour. is not really hour, half an hour. They did not have watches like we did. Alright. So half an hour means only a short time of space. Alright. Alright. So. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God. And to them were given seven trumpets. Alright. So in the seventh seal. God opened it and there is no silence. So go and see now Revelation 8. Alright. I'm preaching on, the, on Revelation 8. To tell us what is this half an hour. I believe it's when Jesus Christ came and hung on the cross. Then the whole universe who saw God was shocked to a still. And I have scripture... It is the place where God arose from his throne and said to humanity, be silent. Alright? Be silent. So there is silence. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets. Seven trumpets. So it's messengers and angels that are going to blow or speak or prophesy something. Alright? What is prophecy? Prophecy is the speaking of God's word. The word prophecy means the speaking of God's word. Or the trumpet is a prophecy. It is a blow of God's word. Alright? Now there's silence. God died. And then what? something happened when he died. An angel, verse 3, who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar, at the altar. He was given much incense to offer. Now, incense is fragrance. Oh, that's why I smelled something. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. <laughs> fragrance. All right. In our uh, service, while we were worshipping God, I said I can smell, I smell anointing oil in the air where I stood. So listen here. And another angel who had a golden censer. It is a golden censer. Alright, gold. And that speaks of something. Came and stood at the altar and he was given much incense to offer. An uh, altar is a place where you offer it. Alright. And here we are this morning standing before God. And we are offering praises. 
But here is a great when there was silence, when God hung on the cross, there was a message that came out of this. And the first message, the trumpet that blown, that speak, was, wait, shh, silence. First, I want to message this out. So this is very important. Alright, the first trumpet is very important. What is this message? There is an angel with a golden censer and he has much incense. We're going to come back to that. To offer it with the prayers of all the saints. So he has a golden cup in his hand. Inside is incense. It's perfume. It smells great. And he wants to offer on the altar unto God he wants to offer it with the prayer of the saints. Alright? Prayer of the saints. On the golden altar before the throne. Alright. So if we read too fast, we are missing things. But if we read slow, we will see it. Alright? Now I'm going to read slow. And then we will see it. He is giving much incense to offer. He has a golden censer in his hand. Alright? He has a golden censer in his hand. And there is much incense in the golden censer. And he wants to offer it with the prayer of all the saints. He wants to offer it with the prayer of all the saints. Alright. On the golden altar. Golden altar. Before the throne of God. Alright. The smoke of the incense. Together with the prayer of the saints. Went up before God from the angel's hand. Listen. Golden censer is in the hand of the angel. You see that? The golden censer is in the hand of the angel. Okay. Listen. The smoke of incense. There were incense inside. The smoke of the incense. Together with the prayers of the saints. Together with the prayers of the saints. Went up before God from the angels hands. So who is the censer? The golden censer. Is the saints. And what is the incense inside? The prayer. Let's read it slow. Then you can hear it. It says, the, Another angel who had the golden censer came and stood at the altar. He's going to offer it now on a golden altar. Alright? And he was given much incense. So what is the incense of the saints? Prayer. And he is given much incense. So it means a prayer that is much. Incense that is much. Prayer that is powerful. Much prayer. Important prayer. Powerful prayer. Alright, and he wants to mingle his powerful, important prayer with the prayers of the saints. He wants to mingle his incense with the incense or the prayers of the saints. He had the golden, the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. Because he has a censer in his hand, and smoke arise 
out of the censer and that is the prayer of the saints Amen. but he has much incense and he wants to offer his incense with your incense can you see it so who is this angel Jesus Christ is this messenger who stand before the altar there is silence now remember it's in the seven seals there is no silence he died another angel I saw standing this is a word so people are messengers angels are messengers and God is an angel a messenger because the word angel means only a messenger but God in his death on the cross maybe you do not understand now but you will see it later alright he wants our prayers to be powerful like he is going through much incense with our incense our prayers of the saints went up before God the angel took the censer fill it with fire from the altar and hold it on in it on the earth and there came pulls of thunder rumblings flashes of lightnings and earthquakes all right so it is God is saying for many years the saints has prayed prayed unto me but they need something to give them power they need fire I will be the messenger and I will took golden cups just believe me what I'm saying now. I'm going to give you scripture. I will take golden cups. And I will mingle my much incense with their incense. Their prayers. And that will rise. But first, I'm going to took the censer and fill it with fire. Spirit. Because fire is spirit and spirit is fire. I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Alright? So, and fill it with the fire from where? From the altar. The altar, the golden altar. In the temple of God. Alright? So God says, I want prayer, but I want the right kind of prayer. I want the right kind of praise. For many years, men pray unto me, and they praise me, and I accept it, but it was powerless. I'm going to mingle my fire, my spirit, with their prayers. They are the golden censers and the golden cups. And I'm going to fill it with fire, and throw it into the earth. Who is the earth? We are the earth, the earthen vessels. And there came pulls of thunder, meaning now is our prayers not lifeless. Because our prayers and the prayers of this angel that is much incense, that goes up before God, brings now pulls of thunder and rumblings ooh, and flashes and lightnings and earthquakes so all these four things that I'm speaking is about prayer life and all these things happen when fire was thrown into the censer and the censer was thrown out the prayer the prayer life of the saint turned and changed when? in the day of silence can you see what I'm saying? Alright. And now the prayers are different. Listen, we are natural type of people, and when we speak when we look to people, we see natural men. But the spirit realm, the demons and the devils, 
And the angels, when they look to us, they see two types of people. They see dark and they see light. And when you speak, they see something different. If Satanists, who sometimes are in the spirit dimension, they say, oh, we cannot come close to you because we see something, there's a light inside of you. We know there's a light inside of you. We cannot come into your midst. We do not like you. We cannot touch you. I've seen many times in my ministry that people that are demonized, they do not want me to touch them. You see natural Martin, but they see different. And when I'm speaking, you hear words. Listen, I want to speak upon this prayer. You only hear words. Oh, that's nice words. But the spirit I mentioned is listening different. Amen. They see thunder and lightnings when you pray. But the prayer that is mingled with fire or spirit. All right? Listen. I, I, I must tell you, this is so important what I'm telling you this morning. This morning when I wake up, I hear the Lord Jesus Christ say to me, Do you know how precious it is for you to sing? I say, ah, what? To sing? Yes, it's a privilege for you to sing. If you know how much... And how awesome privilege and honor it is for man to sing. You will sing the whole day long. Maybe you have kids in your life and you see kids sing, let them sing. It's an awesome power and privilege to sing. It's an awesome privilege to speak. But there's something more when you sing. You put melody. We think people can sing. Oh, this guy sings. This is nice. Uh, uh, sorry, I do not have the English words to explain myself this morning. In Afrikaans, I can tell you now what I think. <laughs> English. I do not. I cannot tell you how privileged it is for man to sing. How important it is for man to sing. And what happens when you sing. We think we come together and say, We love your presence, hallelujah. I love, I love, I love your presence. For God is saying, this guy is singing. Oh, it's awesome. I love it. Amen. This guy sings. Because a deprived, depressed and stressed man with sin and iniquity cannot sing. <laughs> But if you can sing, it is good, it's powerful, it's a privilege. When you drive your car, sing. If you're on a bath, sing. If you shower, sing. Sing, sing, sing. Amen. I hope you believe me. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, God is here. I've smelled the fragrance of God's anointing. And oil. And that is only a manifestation. What I'm saying here is true. I am the golden censer. <laughs> and the, when I speak, there's lightnings and thunders. And when you pray, there's lightnings and thunders. When your prayer life is mingled with fire or spirit. Before the time, there was not. But in the silence of half an hour. When God died on the cross. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Alright, Revelation 3 verse 7. Revelation 3 verse 7. Speaking on the golden censers of prayer. Afterwards you are going to say, well that was good. <laughs> And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, right? Who is the angel of the church? It's a pastor. 
the leader of that church. John, write to the seven churches, write to the seven angels, write to the seven messengers, write to the seven pastors. Alright. So write to the angel of the church to Philadelphia. These things say he who is holy. He who is true. He who has the key of David. He who opens and no one shuts. And shuts and no one opens. Alright? Who has the key of David? Jesus has the key of David. Alright? And he's speaking now. It says, I will open and no one will shut. And what I'm shutting, no one will open. And I'm reading out of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Revelation 3, verse 7. And then verse 8 says, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. So Jesus has the key. And he opened. The whole book of Revelation is, is about the day of the Lord when Jesus hangs on the cross. And that opened, the silence came, and that opened the door for us because he got the key to open the seven seals thereof. Alright. Now, he says, I have placed an open door before you, and nobody will shut. I will give you an open thing. I will give you a authority and nobody can take that away. I will open a door and nobody can close it. I mean that that, that mean I will give you authority and nobody can take it away. I've given you an open door. I sit before your open door. No one no one can shut it. And shut and no one can open things. I know your works. See, I've set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have little strength. You have little strength. The prayer of the saints in the golden cup is little. But I, another angel came with much incense, with great prayer, with fire, mingle it with the prayer of the saints, and then he cast it into the earth. I have opened a door for you. I have set the door open, and nobody must close it. Nobody can close it. Alright? It says, I have, verse 8, you have little strength without me. Have, but you have kept my word, and have not Denied my name. You have kept my word. Alright, I'm going to write kept here. And did not deny my name. Alright, what is this? It's a bowl. It's a sensor. It's a cup. And a cup is something that you are. Okay, you drink something, but it kept something. You have kept my word. Alright? So, kept my word. So, inside here is your prayer. It's the incense. And now it's mingled with the great angels, spirit and fire. And the word of God. It's mingled with spirit and with word. You have kept my word. And that's why you can overcome. Because this is only now one message to one of the churches that, John, that I'm reading now unto you. I'm not going to read you the other. I'm only going to read you this. Because I want you to understand this morning about the golden cup that pray. But pray differently. Alright? Pray differently. I've set an open door for you. The door was not always open. It is set now open for you. 
You have little strength in yourself. But when my fire and my fragrance and incense are mingled with your prayer, your strength will turn. I have said unto you an open door. You have not denied my name. You have kept my word. Verse 13. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast what you have. That no one might take your crown. Alright, what is a crown? It's an authority. No one must take your crown. But what am I, this is a crown, but what am I speaking now on this church, to this assembly? He speaks of open door. You kept the word. Do not deny me. Holy and true are you. You've got the key. I've given you an open door. You have little strength. But I'm going to give you an open door now. And then we have read in Revelation 8 that wait, the seven in silence, the seven trumpet will blow, and as it is going to blow, the angel will come and took the golden censer, fill it with fire, mingle it with the prayers of the saints. And throw it into the earth. And then there will be lightnings and thunders. So the little will change to strength. Alright. Behold I am coming quickly. Hold fast to that you have. That you have. Hold fast on what you have. And let no one take your crown. What is this crown? This authority. Let no one take this authority away from you. Let no one take your crown. Let no one take your crown. Let no one take your authority. So in this sermon this morning, if I say that to you, it means this golden censer is now filled with the word and with spirit and with fire. And it's a fragrance that is thrown out into you. And you have lightnings and thunders and bolts. Let no one take that crown. Let no one take that authority. Let no one take that honor from you. I've set an open door before you. I'm going to do something. The saints, you are little. Your prayer is little. You are weak. But I'm going to do something. Isaiah 22 verse 1. 22 verse 22. And this will now explain to you everything that I've said so far. Isaiah is an Old Testament prophet. 22 verse 22. So he is prophesying something until John who would come. Because John will be the last prophet of the Old Testament. Alright. And Jesus is the one that will bring the kingdom of God. So the Old Testament will finish with Jesus or with John. Alright. And then Jesus will bring the kingdom of God. Now Isaiah is prophesying unto that. Listen what he's saying now. What did John in Revelation said to you so far. I've said to you. Jesus got the key of David. Now. I've said to you something about kept. A, a bowl. To keep something. Alright. Listen what Isaiah is saying. Many years before Jesus. He says. I will place on his shoulder. So Isaiah is prophesying to people now many years before Jesus. There is going to come someone and I will place on his shoulders 
the key of the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. Can you hear what Isaiah is saying exactly the same as John? But, in which theme? In which surroundings? Let's go on. It says, I will place on his shoulders the key of the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I will drive him like a peg into a firm place. I will drive him like a peg. He is a wooden peg in a firm place. He will be a seat of honor for the house of his father. Father. Jesus will be nailed like a peg in a sure place. It's the time of silence. It's the time of the cross. I will give him the keys. And he will have the keys of David on his shoulders. And I will drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will be a seat or a throne of honor for the house of his father. Who is our father? Heavenly father is our heavenly father. Who is the house? We. We are the house of the father. So he will be the honor of the house. So who is our honor? Jesus is our honor. The house of the father. All the glory of his family. All the glory of his family will hang on him. So I will come and I will take Jesus and I will put him in a sure place. I will nail him in a sure place. And he will be an honor for the family of God and for the house of God, us. And then I will all the glory of his family will hang, hang on him. Yes, Jesus hanging on the cross. And the family will come and hang on Jesus who hangs on this sure place. What is the seat and the throne for, for the family? They will bring their glory. They will bring their glory. And hang it on him. It's offsprings and offshoots. Whose offsprings and offshoots? Jesus. Offsprings and offshoots. All its lesser vessels. From bowls to all the jars. Listen. Listen, let me explain it to you. A jar, a vessel, okay. and what say a lesser vessels? Bowls. So the family of God will hang on Jesus their jars, vessels, and bowls. They will bring their glory. Because he will be their honor. Where? On the cross. So I saw half an hour of silence. Then I see a great angel will mingle. He will take a golden censer of much incense. The prayer. Awesome prayer. Spirit prayer. And word. He will mingle it with the prayers of the saints in this golden bowls. And then the little will change to much. And when he throw that into the earth, our prayer lives will be lightnings like lightnings and thunders. Now Isaiah will come before time and he will say it a little bit different. He will say, listen, I see bowls, jars and vessels. And that is the house of 
the Father. And they, the Father will take Jesus who has the key of David that will open a door. For who? For them. And they will honor him for that. And then they will come and hang their jars, their bolts, and their vessels of glory upon him. His offspring, Jesus' offspring, I will nail him to a sure place. So whatever I've said it so far, in your mind, you need to make the connection now between the cross, the silence, the vessel, the key. How do you sign a key like that? The cross, the keys, all right, the cups, the cups, you must make the connections. What is inside of the cups change. And people, the house of God, the people will bring their glory and hand that now upon him, Jesus, who hangs in a sure place. That sure place is also the throne. Where he hang on. Alright. <coughs> 1 Peter 2. Verse 9. 1 Peter 2. Verse 9. Are you with me? Yeah. Can you see what I'm seeing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you are a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation. Meaning, God is sitting on His throne and He says, I chose you. You are a people, chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Now look, look here. A royal kings with crowns. Royal. Do you know in the Old Testament they only use gold, silver and bronze? Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright. And that speaks of something. Gold speaks of righteousness. But gold is also something about authority and rulership and king, kingship. So every time when I say, I see gold, then in your mind you must see something about rulership and kingly. That's why the bowls or the censers are gold. Because this is kingly. The gold speaks of kingly. The censers is cups. You are a royal priesthood do you know what's a priest a priest is a cup and a censer sometimes when you dream when you dream you, we dream images and we do not know what that images means but if I'm telling you this word now you are a chosen generation. That means you will dream up a, a, a image of someone that would took you. You are a chosen generation. Is that true? Alright. Then I say unto you, you are a royal priesthood. Do you know what is the image of a royal priesthood? It's a cup that's golden. <coughs> A priest, hood. A priest is cups taken by God to throw out. So a cup is, a pri is the priesthood and the golden is the kingly priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim 
the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, who once were not the people but now are the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but, but now have obtained mercy, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Can you hear? So, alright. I see golden cups of prayer. I see a royal priesthood that will hang their glory, their prayer and their praise upon the Lord Jesus Christ to honor Him. First, their incense was weak, but in the time of the cross and silence, God came and He took the golden censers, the priesthood, and He threw it with fire and spirit, and their prayer changed to strength, where lightnings and thunders came now out. And then I will nail him on a sure place. And the people of God, the family of God, Isaiah says the household of God, they will bring their glory. They will bring their golden cups of much incense and hang it upon him. As they were praying and saying and speaking, there will be lightnings and thunders and earthquakes. Amen. Amen. Because they will have now power and authority. Where things was not like this, now it is. They have now a crown. Let nobody take your crown. Let nobody. They did not have mercy, but they have now mercy. The door was closed, but now the door is open for them. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah. So, you get people that will pray, but they need fire and spirit. Amen. We need the fire and the spirit in these golden cups of us. It must be mingled with Holy Spirit. Then, it is a crown for us. And let nobody take your crown. Because I've opened the door for you. I've got the keys of David. Isaiah, same. I've got the keys of David. Jesus. And I will hang on a sure place. And you as jars and bowls and cups will hang your glory upon me. Amen. Let nobody take that mercy. You did not have this mercy, but now you have this mercy. I have set an open door from me for you. I've got the keys. Now, things are different. Amen. Everything in the Old Testament that is images that we need to see and understand. And everything in the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation is something um, this is shadows of Jesus. And this is the... How can I say it? This is the... Realization. Yeah, the realization of what these people are saying in the Old Testament and Jesus did. Yeah. But in an image form. So when we read Old Testament or the book of Revelation, we need to seek scriptures... In the New Testament, what Paul is saying, and, and then the thing will open for us. Because it's like someone who dream. Many people would have dreams and they would say, Martin, can you please help us? And I would say, all right, send to me your dream. I will pray over it. And then something, sometimes it's opening like this. 
They would say, oh, I see this, and I see this, and then I went through that, and this happened to me, and this, and then that, and then that, and, and I say, oh, 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 I can see it. Yeah. Oh, God is saying that, 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 that to you. Sometimes it comes to me easy, and sometimes it's taking a little while. I must pray, Lord, help me. Help me. <laughs> to see things. I cannot uh, what is the English word now? I cannot I cannot help you to see it. You must see what I'm saying to you. And if you can see it, you have spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to know that God is saying this morning, I've opened a door for you. I've taken you as a golden censer and I throw much incense in you. You have no spirit. So do not let no one take this mercy from you that you did not have. Let no one take this throne from you. And that's why I'm stopping with 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 and 17. And that's why Jesus said to me this morning, as I wake up, open my eyes, I hear God is saying, singing is precious. It's an honor. Do it as much as you can. Pray as much as you can. Let no one take your mercy. Let no one take your throne. Let no one take your crown. Let no one... Because when you sing and when you pray, you have power and lightnings and thunders and earthquakes. Earthquakes means people are shaking. Things are shaking. Amen. Thessalonians 5 verse 16 and 17 says, Be happy in your faith. And rejoice and be glad hearted continually. Be unceasing in prayer. Pray without ceasing. And the translation say pray with continuously. Do not stop. Pray without. Let nobody take your crown this morning. It's a mercy that God gave unto us. For many years, the Old Testament people prayed, but it was weak, it was little power. Even um, James, Jesus' brother says, Listen, Elijah prayed, and I saw things happen, it, it did not rain. And then James would say, We, he was a man just like we, But we are much greater. Amen. Because the change came. Here was it still prayer outside of Jesus. But here we have a mingle of His Spirit and fragrance in our cups. Amen. But we do not believe what I'm saying this morning. That's why we do not pray. We need to believe what I'm saying this morning. It's a crown. Let no one take your crown. Let no one take your cup. Pray. Amen. Now I'm going to give you a thing that I believe is very important. A practical thing. Alright. When we have situations and problems in our life and we pray. We forget what we pray for and we forget to say thanks. And we forget to see if God is opening that thing. We do it because we have many prayers. We pray for things. But this is a practical thing that you need to do now. And that will help you to pray much more. 
and that will help us to see God's building blocks of testimonies in your life. Read, wrote, write, write in a book things that you prayed for. Alright. So make a list. I'm going to write this, I'm going to pray for that. I pray for that, I pray for that, pray for that. And every time when you're going to pray, you, you see what you have write down. Then, when God answered it, you write next to it. God answered that. God answered that. God answered that. That will help you to see. Wow, God is answer prayer. So the next problem and situation that stands before you, you are going to say, let's pray about it. But because we do not do that, and God is answering prayers, but we forget about this prayer because we prayed about three weeks ago about that. We forget about it and God is saying, mm, well, we are going on. And we thinking that things come to pass because of life. And we think things come to pass because it needs to come. But, listen, me and Karen, when we started our ministry three years ago, it was 94, it's almost 30 years. <laughs> it's 26 years. We have seen many times, we pray, Lord, we do not have food. Uh, yes, the lady, she is giving us food. Oh, praise God. Well, then, tomorrow, the same, we pray about things. We say, oh boy, 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 boy. It was so regular that like God provided for us on our prayer life that there came a time that we do not need to pray actually for the, those type of things anymore. Mean, uh, we got it that place, we do not have it, but it's alright, we know we are going to get it. Why? Because the building blocks place faith in our hearts. But God did it there, 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 there. So I don't need actually to pray anymore. God will provide. And that's what happened. So your prayer changed actually in a faith. A faith thing inside of you. But if you pray and God do it, but you never see it, nor honor Him, nor know it, uh, it's getting do you hear what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. it's going to build faith in you Amen. and it's going to keep you prayer, prayer because you believe now what I'm saying so far that it's a crown and it's authority because it's a royal priesthood priest pray they are the cups and it's mingled with spirit and when they pray, it is full of lightnings and thunders and pulls of earthquakes and stuff. <laughs> what can I say to you? I hope you understand it. Pray and praise. Alright. But first, we need spirit. So, but we are children of God. And that we hang on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is an honoring. And that's why it says, Jesus is saying, be unceasing in prayer. That means do not stop prayer. Why would he say that? No, there is no power in prayer. But Jesus is pray without ceasing. Don't stop prayer. There must be power in it. There is power in it. Thank you. May you be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.